EA Sports brings you a special edition of the National Football League for this Thanksgiving matchup. It's the New York Jets and the Miami Dolphins coming up next. The summer humidity has given way to an absolutely gorgeous fall afternoon here at Hard Rock Stadium in Miami. Today, our holiday coverage kicks off with a good one here, as it'll be the New York Jets taking on the Miami Dolphins. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. At CD, the Dolphins, they've got some high hopes for 2023. They feel like they've got the pieces to make a run. They need a little bit of health, but they think they can be right there in the AFC East. And they'll want every game to be a track meet because speed is their calling card. And if they're able to sprint out there ahead of people and make them chase, they'll be tough to reel in. Now, meanwhile, for the Jets, you know, even putting the quarterback situation aside, this is an exciting time for them right now. Yeah, they were just 7-10 last year. I get that. But they're building a roster that's potentially got some future stars involved. They certainly are. Remember, going 7-10, and 10, they were 7-3 and three at one point last season. And they finished the year with the offensive and defensive rookies of the year. So you know that this roster is really on the rise. Here's the punter, Thomas Morstead, to get this one started. And we are underway from Hard Rock Stadium. And this will go as a touchback, and they will begin things at the 25. Here is Tua Tungavailoa heading out to lead this Miami offense. You want to talk about a driven player partner. This guy is absolutely that person. He doesn't just have goals in this game. He wants to be remembered among the best to play the position, and he treats every game as an audition for that. It's a lofty goal to set for yourself, but we've seen his drive lead to some impressive games from him. Perhaps another one is in store today. Throwing to start here is Tua. And he'll complete this one to Barrios. And he gets this up just shy of the 30 to the 29 before he's out of bounds. Four yards the result on the first play from scrimmage. Second down. Now their 31-year-old running back, Raheem Mostert. And he'll have a Dolphins first down as he's got this up to the 35-yard line. That's a good, nice, crisp run for a first down. I wonder if the defense might have been loosened up a little bit, maybe anticipating a pass instead of the run that they got. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Again, they'll run it with Mostert. And he stopped immediately there. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. The free safety roaming all the way up to the line of scrimmage to make that stop. How about his ability to trust his eyes and figure out it was not a pass play and go fast towards the line of scrimmage in order to make that tackle? On second down, Tua. A short throw there, that's to Smythe, the tight end. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. Brandon, perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion that would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion, but I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication, and as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing, communicating, there he is, and they passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. Nine yards on the pick up there, and it keeps the drive alive. I'm not sure that that was necessarily a safety valve or a check down throw on third down. Sometimes just try and find the open guy and get him the ball. He did exactly that and found a way to pick up a first down. So in jet territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 47. From the gun, it's Tua. And just not enough on the throw there. Down around his feet and incomplete. This could be the start of a nice stand from this defense now after getting walked backwards on this drive. Come through with another one here, and you have them staring at a third and long, and that puts the defense in a position to dictate to the offense. 
After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. And again, it's Tonga Vailoa. Getting this out to the flat, Mostert. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves them with third and nine looming. And forget about the run to set up the pass. They're just coming out throwing. Forget trying to set anything up. They feel like they have the advantage. They feel like they have the matchups, and they're just attacking right now. Yep, going to the air on the opening drive. Now play number eight on this drive, and they need nine yards to pick up the first on third. And that's going to be another first down as the tackle made at the Jets' 32-yard line. They give them 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. Another completion right there. And again, Charles, good time in the pocket. That offensive line on this opening drive been really solid. They've been more than solid. They've really tamped down the pass rush and kept him safe in the pocket. Able to look around, find his target, and deliver. He's got to make sure he tells our offensive line in the huddle. Thanks, fellas. Let's keep it going. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. So from the 26-yard line, here's second and four. Tongue of Iloa working out of the gun. A short throw there. That's to Smythe, the tight end. Just a gain of a couple there. And it makes it third down and two yards to go. Oh, it's time to give a little credit there to the defense. They played that very well because it was a drag route, and he ran a little shallower than normal as he worked straight across the field. He was hoping he'd get lost behind the defensive line. But once he made the catch, nowhere to turn up field and gain any yardage. Tua looking to throw on third and two. That is caught. And that's going to be another first down as the tackle made at the Jets' 13-yard line. Give him 10 yards there as this offense is on a roll. This drive continues to plunge forward. Oh, there's going to be a little bit of regret there because they certainly had the chance to get off the field here just giving up a field goal attempt. But they couldn't get that stop on third down. Now they have to hunker down because guess what? That drive continues. Two and now on first down. Now the pressure gets there and he goes down just inside the 20 at the 19. The former third overall pick, Quentin Williams there to bring him down. And it's never good to take a sack. You really don't want to take one down here in this part of the field down near the red zone. Not at all because you're already pretty much assured of a field goal. But you take a big sack, it could push you out of range. And that's why defenses get a little more aggressive in this situation. They're almost conceding the three points. They want to push you back and try and take you out of that. They lose two on that last play, so things get even tougher. Third and long coming up. That's a nice job there, foiling what all offenses try to do, which is control the defensive end in the running game. They want to get to the outside, and if he keeps himself free, stays on his feet, he can make a play just as he did there. On third down, H.A.M. And he'll be brought down well short of the first at about the nine-yard line. They'll get 11, but it'll still lead to a fourth down. This offense really put themselves in a tough spot on first and second down and needing long yardage to try and pick up a first down. And they ended up getting a great run. Explosive, picked up nice yardage. You don't expect to be in this situation on fourth down. But guess what? It all started with what happened on first and second down. Really put them behind the eight ball. And all in all, a pretty decent opening drive, Charles. Pretty balanced. They had the passing game going and the rushing attack, too. I would think they have to be happy with that start because you get your ground game going, which means your offensive line and your runners are pretty happy, and then you get your aerial attack going as well, so your quarterback and receivers have smiles on their faces. Now both up to speed, awaiting their next possessions for this game. They can't wait to get started again. After the field goal, here comes Sanders to kick it away. And no effort to bring this one out. It's a touchback. So here come the Jets for their initial possession of the game. They'll be led out by the former UConn and Eastern Kentucky quarterback. It's Tim Boyle. The secret to his game and his success? Incredible chemistry with each and every one of the guys who catches passes with it. And not only does he ask them to stay after practice or meet him before practice, he actually demands it because he knows if they have that kind of chemistry built up, 
They'll be hard to beat each and every ball game. In motion right is Wilson. And they're going to give it to him on the jet sweep. And that is not fooling anyone. He never had a chance to turn the corner there. And they'll go backwards right away. That's the danger, Charles, of running plays like this for your wide receiver. They can hit big or they can be duds. Yeah, you're exactly right about that because if they're forced to try and go around defenders behind the line of scrimmage, sometimes you can give yardage in order to gain it. But in this case, they gave yardage and didn't get it back. And it worked his way across the 30 to the 32. On a second and long, it's really nice to see an offense that has enough confidence to run the football in that situation. I think that goes back to their practice and game planning. They've seen things that they've seen on tape and in previous games that led them to believe that even in a long-distance situation, they can still run the football and gain enough yardage to put themselves in a good spot on third down. And this pass broken up. Excellent coverage there on third down as that was not an easy one to hold on to. And that's exactly what defenses talk about. You've got to find ways to get off the field when you can, especially on third down. And third down defense going to be vital in this game. Able to knock that one away and force a fourth down. And here's Morstead now as he sends this one away. We'll call that a 47-yard punt, a return of just three. So Miami coming out for their second drive. Their drive last time, it stalled out. They were forced to take the short field goal. And the key phrase, you nailed it. Forced to, because you know coaches look at these short field goals as a last resort, right? To them, that's not how drives are supposed to end. You're supposed to put six on the board. That's a consolation prize, like going to the county fair. You don't get the big stuffed animal on that one, do you? No, you don't go top shelf. That's bottom shelf material. Here's Tonga Bailoa on first and 10. And they're not able to hook up there. Incomplete. Even the greats in this game, and, and he certainly qualifies as one of them. They're going to have trouble if they continue to throw into double coverage. And he better be careful. Throwing into too much double coverage might have a couple of them picked off. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Up the middle they go with Mostert. And yeah, he'll be upended here after a pickup of three, getting it out to the 25. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You force the incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? Here's third and seven. Looking to pass, Tua. Oh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. Looked like he had a couple of different options as far as who to throw to on that play. And who am I to say this, but I'm not sure he made the right decision. Well, the window of opportunity is always going to be small in the NFL. That's why those quarterbacks who make quick decisions and have quick releases have the most success in this league. And on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. It's taken to the 26. A 46-yard punt, eight yards on the return. And the Jets will take over first and ten. Back onto the field come the New York Jets for their second drive. And on the first drive, three and out. I know that these are professional athletes, but I would imagine sometimes you, you get the nerves at the beginning of a game still, don't you? Those don't ever go away. And typically, what I've heard from guys and what I remember from playing, if you don't have nerves at the start of a game, it's not going to be a great day for you. You're not really ready to play. So finding a way to harness those nerves and not let them affect you in a negative way, that's what all the guys are looking for. A run there on first down and a pretty good one of five yards, so make it second and five. That's a really nice, tough run inside, and they gained five yards on it, and be frank about it, most offenses don't expect to get five yards on a play call like that. So when they do, they go back to their huddle with a little pep in their steps. They're starting to think that they're starting to dominate the line of scrimmage. Back to throw is Boyle. They're able to complete this one to Tyler Conklin. And they've got it well across midfield down to the 40 before it's all said and done. 23 yards to pick up there. 
And that was good protection there. No, that was great protection there because it allowed him to lock in on his receiver. Although I think he was looking for his tight end on the corner route all the way. Nice connection there for a really nice gain. So now first and 10 as they've crossed into Miami territory right at the 40. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. He was out there waving his arms, saying, throw it here, dropped it, not a good look. Well, all I can do is just look at him with contempt on that one. As a defensive back, I'm saying, not as an announcer. <laughs> just like, really? A little bit of a diva look, isn't it? Yeah, very much so, because I think what happens is he just had too much time to think. He's wide open now. Here comes the ball, and he doesn't concentrate and drops it. The boy will throw here, pulled in by Lazari. Five yards, now it's third and five. Well, if you do read man coverage, Brandon, the drag route's a pretty good one to run against it because you're running away from people on it. They'll come up facing third and five. To throw is Boyle. He's got his target. That's complete. And he's got another first down as he's brought down at the Dolphins 16. The Jet passing game in rhythm. They've got another first. Well, certainly as a fan, you get a little bit nervous when you see him make those kind of throws. But they work on that in practice more than we know. And most of them now know their limits and know what they can get away with. And there's a completion right there. And he's in. Touchdown, Jets. Brees Hall. A 16-yard touchdown run. And the Jets have answered that early field goal to take a first-quarter lead. A solid blocking up front from the guys on the offensive line allowed him to get in for the touchdown. Yeah, some might say that the guys on the offensive line were in concert. I used to have a coach who called it marrying up, meaning when you get on a guy, you just stay right there, and each guy has his own assignment. That allowed the runner to make the big move towards the end zone. Zerline connects on the extra point, and that makes it a 7-3 lead. Morstead out now following the touchdown to kick. And they will wrangle it down a couple yards shy of the 30. The Dolphins offense now ready to go back out onto the field. and the Dolphins now with a first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. Going to the air, Tugamailoa. Completes it to the tight end, Smythe. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. First play of the drive, a success, 19 yards. I know exactly what's going to be said about that play from the defensive perspective. What's that? That's why I tell all you guys we need more than one tackler to the ball. He broke the first tackle. Luckily enough, there are more people there to get him down. Setting to throw on first down is Tua. It's Hill, complete. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch, and that's going to bring up second down. It's a game of matchups, and that's why you take your receivers and move them around a bunch, especially your best guys. And when they work out of the slot, you often hear the coaches talk about how great it is because it gives you a two-way go. You can break out or you can break in. That makes it hard to defend. On second down, Mostert. And he'll get it down here to the 43. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Well, you know they had a third down play on standby just in case, but he says no need with that carry. Runs like that will continually earn him more work in this and future contests.
Two and now on first down. Gets this one to Hill. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. Here's second and three. Tua sets up to pass it. Throw left side, taken in by Hill. And Hill is going to have a Dolphins first down as he'll be brought down at the 27. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. After one, 7-3 the score on EA Sports. Second quarter from Miami. It's the Dolphins with the football. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Here's Tua. This one complete to Jalen Waddle. And he'll go down right on the edge of the red zone following a pickup of about seven or eight. Second and three, and they trail seven to three, but getting close to changing that. And this defense hoping to limit them to a field goal to preserve the lead. Now a fake on the jet sweep and a give to Mostert. And this won't be enough to pick up the first. A gain of two, third and one. If they're going to get a first down out of this, they're going to have to earn it because there's been tough going in the interior there. And here we are on third and one. Be prepared. Brace yourself. Could be some contact going on. The Dolphins on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. They're up against a third and one situation. And he picks up the first down yardage as he takes it down to the 16. I don't know about you, but that almost felt like old-time football there. Third and two is not necessarily just a running down anymore. A lot of times they want to throw the ball. They went back to the roots and powered forward and got the first down. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. They'll stay on the ground with Mostert. And he'll get four there down to about the 12-yard line. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive. And once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. Second down and six now. Now they'll throw with Tagovailoa. Got a man and he hits him in stride. Touchdown! Braxton Berrios. A 12-yard touchdown grab. And the Dolphins are once again back in front. Partner, remember that old film of Peyton Manning going through the route tree with his great receivers in Indianapolis? I think we're seeing the results of the same type of work here today. These guys know each other so well that they don't even have to call the play. They can just look each other and know the route that's going to be run, and usually the connection is perfect. Extra point up and good by Sanders, and the lead is now 10 to seven. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. Taken at the goal line. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Now the Jets offense about set to take over as they head onto the field. So remember, Charles, last time they were out here, they scored, but they just saw the opposition score, and they're trailing right now, so they're trying to keep pace here. They need a touchdown drive. Well, if you're a fan of offense, you're loving this, but if you're a fan of defense, this is tough to watch, and it's also tough 
to keep that up when you just watch your opponent march down the field on a scoring drive that lasts into double digit snaps. You need a score here not just to follow the momentum from your last drive, but put the onus back on your opponent. And that's what they're doing right now, swapping that onus back and forth. And he'll take it ahead to the 28 yard line. It's a six yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. I think we all suspected that they were going back to him after he found the end zone on his last carry. And they kept the positive momentum going there. Another nice run by him. Ball on the 28-yard line. Here's a second down and four. Here's Boyle. This throw incomplete, nearly picked off. And with his pedigree, he doesn't drop many of those. But third down coming up. And I think he was a little surprised to see the ball sitting out there like that. That's a ball he had a chance to come away with, but it winds up an incomplete pass. Throwing now, Boyle. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he is going to have a Jets first down. They needed four, he doubled that. He wound up getting eight. So he turned to a trusted, familiar face in that third down situation. It paid off. Yeah, you go to your veteran receiver in that spot. So you can't underestimate him when he's on the field defensively. Make sure you know where he is because he understands how to get open in key situations. On first down, Boyle. A throw out wide going to be incomplete. Going with a dime look on defense. Two extra defensive backs on the field and covered up essentially every blade of grass. That allowed them to disrupt the play. They'll try again from the 36 on second and 10. Now Boyle to throw. That's complete to Cobb. It'll go as a loss of a yard, so now they deal with third and 11. Tough spot, needing 11 yards to pick up the first. Throwing here, Boyle. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. They decided the opportunity was there and launched a deep ball, but he was unable to get away from the defender, couldn't create space, couldn't uncover at the end of the route, and that one winds up incomplete. Here's Thomas Morstead on now to punt it away on fourth down. Yeah, he was looking for the checkup, bounce, didn't get it. That scoots all the way into the end zone now for a touchback. Tua and the rest of the Dolphin offense heading back out. The last series, the ball never hit the ground. Six to six, touchdown pass, so whatever he did then, do it again, right? Yeah, it reminds me a lot of when I watched the best quarterbacks throw seven on seven, or even routes versus air. They're accurate. The receivers catch it. The ball never touches the ground. Or if you want to take it to basketball, a well-executed fast break, right? Pass, 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 finish at the rim, basket. Yeah, ball never hits the ground there either. Meanwhile, to his throw, caught by his receiver, Hill. And he's going to get seven out of this before being taken down at the 27. Operating from the 27 now. Here's second and three. Throwing now is Tungavailoa. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. Tight end has become a bigger and bigger part of the passing game in the NFL, but if you drop the football, that position can get swapped out with a you know, wide receiver in that spot, a running back in that spot. There are other ways they can go if you're not going to catch the ball. And that's not just his first drop, his second drop of the game. Tug of Iloa going to try and throw on third down. He's going to get that to his running back out of the backfield. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. A good pick up there, 26 yards. Oh, that's a big let off there on third down because you've got to count for the running back coming out of the backfield. They didn't, and they got burned, not just for a first down, but for big yardage as well. 
So in jet territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 47. Here's Tongue of Iloa to throw. And he works his way past the line of scrimmage and then slides to a hole. He'll get five out of the scramble, hit second down. I certainly like what he did right there because he smartly wanted to avoid forcing anything downfield because nothing appeared to be open. Nice harmless slide there to avoid the big hit, and he gets a small gain on the play. They hand it off to Mostert. Five yards on first down, but now just a one-yard pickup there on second. Defensively, we always know that he is tough in run support, and I think the way that he gets there is he understands what an offense is going to do before the ball's even snapped. A great job of scouting prior to the game, then reading, reacting, and taking the right path to the ball carrier. From the gun, it's Tua. That is caught. It's going to be another first down as the tackle made at the Jets' 22-yard line. A third down gain of 19. That's a play that will likely be forgotten when you talk about big moments in this game. But plays like this are critical to keep drives going. And if points result, we'll call this play significant. On the handoff, this is Mostert. And he'll take this into the end zone for a Dolphins touchdown. 22 yards for Raheem Mostert. And the Dolphins are able to extend their lead. Well, they've done a pretty good job keeping him in check to that point, but he finally breaks off a nice run here and gets into the end zone. And it just takes one, doesn't it, partner? That can undo a lot of good work that a defense has done to that point. You break off one right there, and everything suddenly looks bad for you. Extra point up and good by Sanders, and his guys will take a 10-point lead. After the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. And he will make it to the 20-yard line and no further. The New York set to take the field. They find themselves down 17-7 as they start this drive first and 10. Back to throw is Boyle. Toward the right sideline, but it's incomplete. I would say it might be a good idea for him to reintroduce himself to his receivers at the half because they're definitely on different wavelengths. But I also don't advocate waiting that long. Next series, before you get out there. Hey, let's get together, guys. Let's get this thing moving. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. On second down, a run to Hall. And he's brought down at the 24 after a gain of four. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get him into a manageable third down because they had incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They needed to make up some ground, and they did. The Jets on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This will be third and six. Boyle. So after three drives and three touchdowns combined between these two clubs, finally we get a defensive stop. Yes, and welcome to the party, defensive players. And glad to have you because for a while there, it almost felt like it was 11 going downfield on air. Okay, so to be able to have someone come up, make a stop, now we've got a football game going. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. A big kick that time, 52 yards. And it'll be Dolphin football. 
Speedster Raheem Mostert in the rest of this offense out to start the drive. He's over 40 yards here in the second quarter. Been nice and effective for them, hasn't he? He has definitely been dependable and really shouldn't underestimate what he's getting done here because anytime you're on a pace that's going to approach 100 yards, you've really done some damage in an NFL game. And now he's looking just to add to his totals. They'll start on the ground with Mostert. And he's tackled at the 38, but they doubled their yardage. The play started at the 19, and they gained 19. And this is an example of breaking down a defense, because on a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack. And guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. From all the way up at the 38 now after a good start to the drive. Once again, it's Mostert. Nowhere to go that time. He maybe got a yard up to the 40. No doubt about it. A really nice job there by the defense, not allowing him to get to the perimeter. But that means your defensive ends, your outside linebackers, the guys that you pay big money to to sack the quarterback, they also have to have interest in the running game as well. And they did a nice job there of holding the point of attack and not giving ground. Now a throw here to his running back. So give him two yards there on the completion. Third and seven now. I know it was a gain, but you have to sense probably a little bit of disappointment there because when it's out there in open space, I think they expect to get more out of a play, don't you? Especially when you're getting it to your guy out of the backfield. You're expecting him to be able to create something, be a little more shifty. Yeah, no doubt about it. Good open field tackling held it to an okay gain. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he is going to have the Dolphins first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, they've certainly gotten him involved in this first half. And on third down, they looked his way again. And what a delight for his quarterback to find him and keep the drive moving. From midfield, here's Tua. They'll get it once more into the hands of Hill. And they're able to work this to the 25 before it's all said and done. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz scheme and you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle, it doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. They get him to the ground right on the cusp of the red zone after a pickup of five or six. That's a strong pickup right there on first down, and as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. From the 20, here's second down and five. Two are going to throw. This one thrown underneath to Achan. So the completion good for just three. And that's going to bring up third and two. Well, offensively, that's the mismatch that you want. You want to force a linebacker to try and cover your back out of the backfield, out in some open space. But linebackers nowadays, they run like backs. And they take a lot of pride in covering. What a nice play he made there in the open field. Fighting through pressure. Steps away to his left. And he will slide to a stop. He does have the first down. Give him seven on the tuck and run, and it'll get him a new set of downs. Certainly not a positive sign if you're the D coordinator and you see your guys give up that space so early in the game. Third down, that's when the clamps are supposed to come out, but his ability to create things with his legs makes things difficult. Now Tua on the bootleg here. And the pressure gets there. He'll go down. It's a sack. And it is going to bring us to the two-minute warning. Throwing on second and long. Tua. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. Well, partner guaranteed they approach this play with the idea of making up ground to make third down manageable. Unfortunately, with that incompletion, 
right back where they started on the last snap. Now they need a big third down play in order to pick up the yardage needed. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Wide open receiver complete. Touchdown, Dolphins. Tyreek Hill on the touchdown pass from Tua. But his guy's now an extra point away from taking a three-score lead. When you're a great route runner, it makes you that much better as a receiver because now your quarterback trusts that you're going to be where he expects and he's able to deliver the ball on time. Sanders now to add the extra point. And that'll make this a three-score game as the lead moves to 17. A pretty long drive that time. 11 plays all told. And it ends with a touchdown pass to Tyree Kill. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. On the return is Gibson. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. Another drive coming up for New York's offense. On first and ten, it's Boyle. This pass out wide to Hall. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll leave him with a second and just a few inches left. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice, safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. And that's caught inside the 35. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. 36 yards on the play. Ah, so often we're watching a football game. We see one with a lot of ebbs and flows, and this one is no different. And sometimes you just need a big play to wake you up a bit. And they get one right there. That shot of caffeine this offense was looking for. So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10, just outside the 30. To throw is Boyle. A quick throw there is incomplete. Well, the incompletion, yes, but maybe here not the worst thing in the world? No, not on first and 10. It actually gives them a chance to regroup, relax just a little bit. They huddle up, talk it over. Then they get a chance to continue their drive. Here's second and 10 now from about the 32. Back to throw again. And his throw is going to be incomplete. That's a big force incompletion there to bring up third and long. And this defense can still salvage a little momentum by forcing them to kick a field goal. Because just a few plays ago, they looked like they were headed towards the end zone. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. They'll look to throw again. but he missed him and it's incomplete sometimes the game is pretty simple put a few extra defensive backs on the field give them nowhere to throw the football force the incompletion and get off the field on third down so here's Greg Zerline now as he'll try for the field goal it'll be a 49 yard attempt from the left hash Zerline's kick is up and through and that will close the gap down to 14 so the three points here, they're still down, but they put somewhat of a dent into that lead going into the break. Anything helps when you're trying to chip away at a lead, but they do know that they're going to need a little bit better effort in the second half.
Morstead, the punter, out to kick it off. And not wanting to risk anything here late in the half, he'll just take a knee and they'll bring the football out to the 25. And here comes Raheem Mostert in the Miami offense. And he's well on his way to a 100-yard game. He's already more than halfway there. We're only in the second quarter. And what I've always loved about running backs is they'll tell you, I had no idea how many yards I had. Right. Those guys have an innate <laughs> sense of where they are in a ball game and how many yards they've accumulated because you know they're always working towards 100. He's been working well towards 100 here. A little under 30 seconds to go. We'll see how they play it here on first and 10. Tua sets up to pass it. He's going to let this one go deep. And that is incomplete. Took a shot there on first down, but he couldn't reel it in. But no kneeling for them. They decided they weren't going to run out the clock. They decided to take their shot downfield, hoping to either make a connection or a pass interference call. They wanted more points to put on the board. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Now Tua. That's complete to Mostert out of the backfield. The Jets are going to use the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 18 seconds to go in the first half. Third down and six. This time they stay on the ground. And he's going to be stopped here a few yards short of the first as the tackle is made at the 33. Jake Bailey on now to punt here on fourth down. This is taken at about the 14. 51 yards on the punt there. And control of the football switching hands with very little time remaining until the half. The New York offense taking over for their next possession. And with seven seconds remaining, not much time to really do anything. And they'll indeed start on the ground to run that clock. And he'll work this back to right around the line of scrimmage and surrender there. So the two teams will head to the locker rooms here in Miami with the Dolphins on top. As we go up to Orlando now and hand it over to Jonathan Coachman with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Take it away, Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome, everyone, to our brand-new studios here in downtown Orlando in the EA Sports Halftime Report. It was a strong first half from the lefty to a tongue of Iowa. He came on after a slow start to fire two second-quarter touchdown passes and give his guys the lead at the intermission. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. The Jets going to get the football first, and they trail as well as we get back underway in this second half. And no fireworks to start the half. This will be a touchback. Now the Jets going to take over on offense to begin this third quarter. As they begin their second half here, Charles, offensively, you know, not where they want to be, obviously. They're losing in this ball game, but very much within striking distance. We'll see what adjustments they make in the second half. Is that the old glass half full, half empty type of a deal? Which way do you want to look at it? Because you're right, they're down on the scoreboard, but they're definitely opportunities now because if they want to go ahead and get going in this one, get back to the running game. I think there are going to be some places to go with it, and I think the offensive line will appreciate the chance to fire out and hit people. That's a good point because they virtually had nothing going in the ground game in that first half. 
So the incompletion, and now it's second and 10, again from the 25-yard line. Here's Boyle. That's complete right side to Lazard. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Just his second catch of the game so far. This one moves the chains. Now that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage. And that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, tight, sharply run route. Against zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area. So you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. Short completion, just four yards. And that'll bring up second down. Throwing now, Boyle. And that's going to be incomplete. Just what they need, electric for me, but subpar offense is what helped get them into this spot. And now they're continuing the trend with incompletions. That won't get them out of it if they don't change something soon. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Again, he'll drop to throw. But to the right side and incomplete. Not that any designs on getting back into this football game in the second half. They're going to need to be much sharper offensively than they were in this opening possession. Not much happening here, and it'll lead to a fourth down. Here's Thomas Morstead now. He's been one of their few bright spots so far. zone for a touchback. Now we get Tyreek Hill and the rest of the Miami offense back out there. And I know that they've double teamed him a couple times, but not a ton. Whatever they're doing isn't working. He's up over 100 yards. We'll see how they adjust. And when they do that, they weaken their defense in other places as well. And how many times have we done games where we've seen a guy have a big game like this? But it's usually not by himself, is it? Right. Usually it opens it up for other people to have big games as well. On the ground, it's Mostert to start the drive. Nice his way forward here, but just three yards on the play, second down. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. Here's Tua. Target over the middle of the hill. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. Two to Tyreek for the Miami first. If you're going to blitz, likely going to leave you in man coverage with this guy, and that is less than ideal. It is because just about any offense that has an elite receiver, if you blitz and have him in man coverage, you're going to him, even if he has an elite defender on him, because he usually knows where the ball is before the defender does. Adrian Amos up to make the tackle. Not a huge carry there on first down, but not all of them will be. But still, all in all, a positive play for the offense. It's all about picking up at least a few to set up what you're going to do here on second down. Ball on the 39. Here's a second and seven. Tug of Iloa working out of the gun. And he'll get this into the hands of Hill complete. And that's going to be another first down as the tackle made at the Jets 42. 19 yards to pick up there. Move the chains. So in jet territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 42-yard line. Going to the air. Tug of Iloa. Going quickly there, but it's incomplete. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Looking to pass. Tua. Throw left side. Taken in by Hill. Five yards. Now it's third and five. And 
again, it's Tonga Bailoa. And this is going to be incomplete. And this defense definitely in his head there on third down, and he's pretty fortunate. They didn't call for grounding on this one. That was a good 10 feet over everyone's head. The Dolphins will send out the punter now as he's on to kick it away. Averaging over 50 yards of punt so far as this one's away. This one angles out of bounds in a good spot in the coffin corner. And they're going to mark this out of the five-yard line. That's a double win there, partner. You keep out of the return man's hands, and you pin him inside the five-yard line. Pretty darn good. On first down, Boyle. He'll get this to Lazard. And they'll get him down up past the 15-yard line. They needed some breathing room. He gave it to him. 11 yards and a first down. And that's one of the better plays we've seen this offense put together so far. They haven't been able to get on track much at all. But listen, they're only down a couple of scores with the rest of this quarter and the entire fourth remaining. So, stranger things have happened. On first and 10, it's Hall. Tackle that time by Jerome Baker out of Ohio State. This is what happens sometimes when you abandon the running game. It's hard to get back to it because once guys get out of that mentality of firing out and hitting people, hard to get them started again occasionally. Second down and eight. Throwing here, Boyle. And that'll fall incomplete. He was hit just as he let that go. And now it's third down. Another attempt, another incompletion. And when I look at the scoreboard and where we are in this game, it comes to mind that they have to start getting the ball in the hands of their playmakers. Throw it to the guys that maybe can take a short pass and turn it into a long game or make people miss downfield. They've got to have points. And the guys who can put the ball in the end zone, they're the ones that need to touch the ball. And he is going to have a Jets first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. A well, part of their struggles in the first half was their inability to convert consistently on third down. But how about this well-designed play? Gave himself plenty of options and able to get the hook up and keep the drive going. Boyle. A short throw to Conklin, the tight end. The result, only four yards there on the play. And it's second down. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on. Catching the ball and not much run after the catch. Second and six. Now Boyle to throw. And this one is incomplete. It's been clear in this matchup which side has been the more physical one. It's been this defense. And here's another example on that last play. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Back to throw is Boyle. And he'll let this go deep for Lazard. And that's caught inside the 30. And he will step out of bounds here inside the 30. It's a big play there for the Jets on third down. 41 yards. I don't care what level of football you play. This one was a universal, wasn't it? When we were kids and we played touch football, remember we get in these positions and you just say, everybody go along and hope <laughs> someone would come free. So now then, the big play has him all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. Here's a quick throw out to Wilson. They had the huge play last time. Here it is a much smaller gain of two. From the 25, here's second down and eight. want to give up the middle and yeah, nothing doing he's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage officially no gain on the play and they're left with a third and eight 
And he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, that was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just zoom. Quick, quick, quick. And what a terrific play, holding them to no gain. To throw on third down. Boyle. Here's a diving catch right side. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. And this is an offense in need of getting a few good things to happen. Here's one right here. They've had their share of struggles in key moments, but that's a nice throw and nice work after the throw. And they're set up now with a first and goal. They'll run with Cook. And he'll take this from the nine down to about the seven. The yards may start getting a little tougher to come by down here near the goal line. That's good work defensively there on first down, holding them to a short gain. The line of scrimmage, the seven now on second and goal. Out of the gun, they run it with Hall. And he's going to press this one forward as they stop him right around the one. A nice run there as he picks up six. It's going to be third and goal now. Sometimes I get caught in hyperbole, but I think they desperately need to punch this one in. They're running out of time. Yeah, two-score game, second half. You're down here. This is the time to put it in the end zone. Yeah, not going to get much better than this for an opportunity. Ball again. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Jets. Brees Hall, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Jets go coast to coast and finish the drive off with six points. And you can bet when they were in that huddle, there is definitely some urgency because I'm sure they were saying to each other, we got to push this one in right now so we don't have to run this on fourth down and there'll be extra bodies in the hole. That's excellent work there at the point of attack. All it takes is one little crease as he fights his way into the end zone. Zerline good with a PAT. And that cuts the lead to 24-17. Morstead out now following the touchdown to kick. And this will be a touchback. Berrios deciding not to bring it out. The Dolphins ready to take over on offense. And their lead cut in half by that touchdown a moment ago. They are up seven as they begin this drive first and ten. Two are going to throw. That swung out to Mostert. And he's upended after a gain of two out to the 27. They'll break the huddle, come up on second and eight at the 27-yard line. A run with Mostert up the middle. And able to stay on his feet past the 30 to about the 33-yard line. 86 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. I don't care what the emphasis is in the NFL at any given time. Every defense is still going to say their number one goal every game is stop the run. And right now, they're not doing that. And that really chips away at your confidence. Tua looking to throw on third and two. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. And that's a really good job there defensively. They went into this possession knowing that they needed to get a stop. They're in a tight ball game, and they got it done. Great work to force the three and out. Got the football right back for their offense. They've got to go to the sidelines feeling pretty good about themselves and encouraging their offensive mates to get some points. And yeah, the punter Bailey on now as he sends this one away. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Jets offense will be backed up to start this drive as they've got it first and 10. Back on offense, New York gets set to take over. Well, certainly they'd rather have the scenario they had last time out, Charles. Remember, they had the short field. 
They took it in the end zone. Now this is going to have to be a longer, more sustained drive if they want to get points. Yeah, a little bit more of a quick strike opportunity last time by where they were on the field, and you're exactly right about that. But now, backed up a little bit. What's that old expression we love to use? Time to matriculate the ball down the field and try and do it again. Now a diving effort right sideline. He's got it. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive. 12 yards. He may go back to the home and have a little discussion with his passer. You know, maybe you don't have to leave me quite that much. <laughs> but on that play, bailed him out in a big way, didn't he? He did indeed. Hey, at least he gets to put it on the highlight reel. They'll give to Hall. A nice little juke. And he'll get this up just shy of the 30. Give credit to the defense for stringing that play out. And they gave up no cutback angle. You know he was trying to dart through. No place for him to go. A nice job there, only giving up a three-yard gain. From the 29, here's second down and seven. Hall again. Shifts by him. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. 17 yards for the Jets there as they've got themselves a first down. How many times do we say in this game that speed kills and it does it in so many different ways? In this case, you got a back who's quick and shifty, can make moves, make people miss, but also gets to and through a hole before it can close down. That's some of the benefits of that speed, not just outrunning people in the secondary. And that led to a really nice game. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Well, from an offensive perspective, that was a tough run because he only picked up three yards. But well, let's flip it over to the defensive side. They now have the advantage. Three three-yard gains, that means they're punting the ball likely on fourth down. That's what you're looking for when you're playing defense. Straight ahead is home. And he'll go down shy of the 40 at the 41. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Yeah, once more, strong running. Excellent blocking at the point of attack. They've got a nice little drive brewing right here. We couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day. One score game. First and ten here. A handoff for Hall. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple and that's it. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground. But I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. Throwing quickly to Wilson. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. We're on to the fourth here on Thanksgiving Day. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. Back now in Miami. It's Jet football, but they trail here as we start the fourth quarter. To throw is Boyle. And that is incomplete. How about this defense? They came up with a couple big plays in this sequence, and none better than the one right there, forcing the incompletion and bringing up fourth down. One score down. Here we go. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. And this is caught. And he doesn't quite make it. Taking it within an eyelash. Dropped at the one. Wow, first and goal. And defensively, all they can do is shake their heads. Not only did they allow the conversion, but a big play as well. Listen, when you're at this point of the game, all options are on the table. Fourth down, they say, we've got to go for it. And what a play they come up with. Big yardage there to keep the drive alive. A looming decision to make on the conversion down seven. But first things first, they need to score as they come up on first and goal. Back to throw again. And this will be caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Jets. A one-yard touchdown reception. And the Jets are an extra point away from tying this game here in the fourth. 
And we are set up for a fantastic finish now. A fourth quarter touchdown here. We're an extra point away from a tie football game. And I know they're thinking about possibly going for two, but I'd go ahead and kick this one and just get it back to level. Zerline now for the PAT. And no sweat. He puts it through, and we are tied here in the fourth. Now this one setting up for a great finish. All tied in the fourth as the kick's away. Braxton Berrios now from his end zone. And he's able to get this across the 20, but not by much as he's marked down officially at the 21. Out comes the Miami offensive unit now. They get set to take over. Well, they just gave up the score to tie it. That's the bad news. The good news, plenty of time in this fourth quarter to try to grab that lead back. Tongue of Iloa and the Dolphins come up first and 10 at their own 21. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. And a quick throw here, that's complete. Only able to gain a couple there, and it'll be second down. Now a give to Moster running right. And he tried to bounce it outside, but they'll stop him behind the line. Now they're staring at a third and eight. That last play backwards a yard. Part of the thinking when you bring in extra tight ends, you're hoping that each of your guys gets those one-on-one -on -one blocks and creates a crease for your runner. You know what the converse is, though? You've got to win those one-on-one -on -one blocks. And when you don't, that's the result you end up with. Throwing his tongue of Iloa on third down here. Pass taken in by his big tight end. He's going to be taken down. Plus, there's a penalty flag in the backfield. They may get 15 more on top of this. Well, Charles, sometimes we talk about the lengths officials sometimes go to to protect star quarterbacks, but that one, that was tough to argue against. Yeah, and I'm sure that everyone's going to say, hey, we're going to administer the penalty the same way for all quarterbacks. But when it's a star back there, even more so, they're going to be diligent about throwing the flag. Now here's a pass on first down that's knocked away and incomplete. It certainly didn't appear that that's where he wanted to go with the ball initially, so he tried to get something out of it by dumping it off to his running back unsuccessfully. Here's second and ten. Throwing now is Chung of Iloa. Completes it to the tight end, Smythe. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. That catch puts him over 70 yards receiving now as he's got a first down. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Well, that's not a run that's going to make any of the highlight tapes, but they've been moving it well all game on the ground. This is another one that keeps them moving forward. Second and eight coming from the 19. Again, they'll run it with Moster. And he will be brought down at about the six-yard line. 101 yards rushing now for Mostert as he picks up a first down. Another carry for their leader and a good one. It's crunch time. They'll need him to continue to be productive in both the run and passing game in order for them to try and snatch a victory. A field goal could get him the lead, but it might not be enough here as they come up on first and goal. Now Tua. A quick throw there is incomplete. Now 
They come up here with another shot from the six-yard line, and it's second and goal now. Up the middle they go with Mostert. And he's going to press this one forward as they stop him right around the one. It'll be a gain of five, and it's going to set up a third and goal. Well, Brandon, we always know that once you score one touchdown, you, you want two. <laughs> you're without a doubt. And so far today, he's got one, but was denied as he tried to get the second one. Again, it's Mostert, but he will go backwards as he stopped for a loss. Losing four yards that time, and now it's fourth down. And I don't think there should be much of a discussion here, but you know how I am. You kick the football, you take the lead. How bold do you want to be in this situation, though? So a big one coming now for Jason Sanders. This to break our fourth quarter tie. Sanders kick is good and the Dolphins have taken the lead here in the fourth. So the drive here ends with a field goal. It does give them the lead, but this one's still certainly a long ways from over. It definitely puts a lot of pressure on your defense to hold the lead, right? They're happy to have it and happy to be out there trying to do so. But I know as a former player, in the back of their mind, they're thinking, why don't you score the touchdown and seal this thing? to the field goal. Here comes Sanders to kick it away. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. And the Jets set to take the field. And now they find themselves trailing following the field goal. Still a good amount of time in this fourth quarter, but this drive very well could determine the outcome of this ball game. Now Hall to start the drive. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple and that's it. You've got to be impressed by that defensive front on reps like those. They were not being moved off the line, kept their shoulders square, and gave their teammates time to fight to the ball and limit that gain. From the 21, here's the second and eight. On second down, they run with Hall. And only a couple there up to about the 23-yard line. Two yards on the first down carry and then followed up by two yards on the second down carry. Well, that's definitely not going to be enough to get the job done. Wasn't the expression three yards in a cloud of dust? <laughs> now they're going to need six on third down to keep the drive going. Now a third and six. Throwing now, Boyle. And he is going to have a Jets first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. <laughs> I got kicked out of that one, partner. You and I talk often about trying to hide receivers in certain situations, but a guy of his size can't really hide him. But the tight end drag route, definitely an effective way to sneak him across the formation for an easy completion and a first down. And he'll get this to the 32. So where'd all that running room that he had in the first half go? Because it looks like it's drying up a little bit here. Someone made some adjustments, it appears, at least on this drive. From the 32-yard line now, here's second down and seven. Here's Hall again. Getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. 98 yards rushing for him now with a couple of touchdown runs to boot. Well, definitely see some open running lanes, and he's taking advantage of it right now, but that shouldn't be a surprise. Defense has the lead. They're playing for the pass first. Two first downs have him up near midfield now on first and 10. Off the play fake, it's Boyle. He's going to get this one out to his fullback. It'll go as a gain of four, and it's second down. And the big guy catches the ball out of the backfield, and oftentimes it's quite a surprise to the guys playing defense because not ordinarily thought as a pass catcher, it often works when they decide to dial it up. 
Now a second and six. Play action. Now Boyle. Under a heavy rush and down he goes. Jalen Phillips, the former first rounder, getting in there for the sack. Yeah, some real defensive resistance there, saying not so fast to a good drive. It marched to the end zone the last time out. A long way to go here on third down for the eighth play of the drive. Here's Boyle. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he's got another first down as he's brought down at the Dolphins' 39. Boy, a nice play there as they wind up converting on third and 15. And here we are in the fourth quarter, partner, and watch them drive for what would be a go-ahead touchdown. And you and I both know this is where you need a quarterback who can keep his cool back there, not just for himself, but to keep the rest of the team relaxed, too. And a short gain there down to the 37-yard line. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. And that last carry puts him right at 100 yards for the game. So how has he done it? Because he's been patient, followed his blocks, let everything develop, and then burst through for big gains. To throw on second down, Boyle. This is Cobb with a catch right side. And he's going to get this inside the 30. 11 more yards there, and this methodical drive continues. I love the drive they're working on here because they know they can take the lead with a touchdown. And so far on this drive, so good. They've moved the ball down the field with very little resistance defensively. But they better be prepared for some adjustments to come their way now. On first down, Boyle. He's got a man. It's his fullback. That's a gain of four as we slip inside of four minutes left in regulation. I wouldn't be surprised to see the next step in utilizing this position. It's to actually utilize more of a scat back in this spot because we saw the catch there, right? He made it, but he's a bigger, stronger guy, maybe not quite as elusive as maybe someone else you would put there. Yeah, down. didn't get the big yardage there you might out of a smaller back. Back to the ground with Hall. And they'll get him down right about the 20. This has been an up-and-down, back-and-forth type of a game, hasn't it? Maybe this long drive took a little bit of the wind out of their sails, kind of settled things down a little bit. So two of two on third-down conversions on this drive, and now they face a third and three here. They'll run with Hall. And he'll wind up losing yardage here, back at the 21-yard line. This defense not budging back-to-back -back carries of just two yards. The short field shrinks even more with the type of bodies they brought in on that play. Those extra tight ends, they weren't able to secure their blocks, and that one ended up going backwards. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. He hit his first, this one from 38. Zerline's kick is up and through. And in the fourth quarter, this game is tied. Now, we knew this had the potential to be a tight game, but with less than three minutes to play, couldn't be any tighter. We're all tied. All locked up, right? And this next drive is going to tell us everything we need to know about this game because I want to see how they come out with the football. Are they going to be aggressive and attack downfield? You still got the two-minute warning to come up? Or are they going to be conservative and try and hold on and maybe just get to overtime? Now this one setting up for a great finish. All tied in the fourth as the kick's away. And this will be a touchback. Berrios deciding not to bring it out. Speedster Raheem Mostert and the rest of this offense out to start the drive. He's been a good workhorse. I know we use the word workhorse a lot, but he's been a good workhorse for him in this one. No doubt about it, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's what you're looking for if you're a back because that means everything's coming together for you. The big guys up front have created space. You've run through it. You've probably gotten some help even from the wide receivers who want to catch passes as opposed to block, but they're helping out too. Yeah, everyone's pitching in. He's had a good game. They'll start on the ground with Mostert. And this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30.
Getting down to the good stuff. All tied with two minutes remaining on EA Sports. So the Dolphins have it as we welcome you back in. Here comes second down at five. Throwing to a... They set up the screen. A-chan has it. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. And when you have success throwing the football, the old cliche becomes true. The playbook opens up wide. And these screen passes, they become even more difficult to stop. Plenty of time. All three timeouts still remain. Here's first and ten now. Now Tua. Connecting with Hill. I don't know that those medium five-ish yard gains are going to do it right now. Probably should have dropped it, right? Yeah, that way you save more time on the clock. But I know receivers, they think they can catch it and break a tackle and turn into a big gain. They'll come up now on second down. Tua. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. Okay, there's three timeouts left, right? Think you gotta use one here, don't you? Got about it. Use one right here. Here's first and ten. Here's Tua on first and ten. It's Mostert. And down to the 41. Now the Dolphins going to burn the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 35 seconds left to go. You ready to go, fellas? Let's ride out. Let's ride out. It's on, baby. Come on, come on. A look at the clock. 35 seconds to play. This is second down. Out of the gun, here's a give to Achan. The 20! And that's a touchdown as they've broken our tie here in the final minute of the fourth. I guess when you look back on it, it was just a matter of time until he popped a big one like that. And, you know, at halftime, you and I discussed it. They'd done a nice job on him in the first half. But there were a couple of occasions where it felt like he might wiggle out of traffic and take it to the house. Finally here in the second half, that got done. Sanders on for the extra point. And they will take a seven-point lead now. That time, a six-play drive. And it's capped off by the late touchdown. It's a seven-point lead here in the final minute of the game. the touchdown ready to kick it away is Sanders from a couple yards deep he'll bring it out of the end zone and no chance to get away as they'll get him down at about the 17 yard line so the Jets now down by seven 26 seconds to go needing to go pretty much the length of the football field as they have it first and ten to throw and that is caught on the right sideline but out of bounds says the line judge the throw took him a little too far it's second down work with me partner take a deep breath because that's what they're doing down the field now that incompletion allowed them to exhale and I believe the referee's been buzzed yeah they want to take another look at this call and it's certainly a big one here late in a tight game did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide. And I, I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things. But even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Well, here's the call. 
So the officials and the folks in New York got a second look at this one, and the call is going to be overturned. They come up now on second and two. He'll look to throw. That's caught by Wilson. This definitely four down territory at this point, but a critical third down here. He's back to throw. He's got his target. That's complete. The Jets are going to use the first of their timeouts as they stop it with 14 seconds to go in the game. Two timeouts still in their back pocket. It's first and ten. They'll look to throw. Got a man. That's Lazard. Now they burn the timeout. And they're kind of in that gray area where they might be able to get two plays in, but maybe just one play left in this ball game. We'll see. This is first and ten. Back to throw. This to possibly force OT. And this is incomplete. So no miracles here on the final play. And this ball game is over. What a game we were treated to in this one. And then on that final play, they had a chance. They had the ball just beyond midfield for one final shot, but couldn't get it done, and they suffered the loss. Yeah, and you mentioned how they had a chance on that final play, and getting it to midfield gave them that opportunity, hoping they could find their way to the end zone and make that miracle happen. A really good ending to an entertaining contest, though. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. The Dolphins are winners here as we say so long from South Florida.